here. Lay down. All right, doesn't matter. Can you hear me? All right, maybe better. This theory, you use it very frequently after work, especially in unit operation three. Okay, so this one I would give you in advance. Now, consider a wall. You have a solid wall with temperature T1. If you assume that this is a wall of furnace, high temperature, okay? Outside is a ambient air. It's just atmospheric air that has lower temperature, okay? If you stand outside and you use your hand to feel the temperature, out here temperature will be just the same as surrounding. But if you move toward the wall, you should feel that temperature is increasing, right? So when you start moving from here inward toward the wall, you feel warmer and warmer. That means temperature rise up. If you take a measurement, the temperature rising like, like this would be nonlinear. Okay? Why? Why is, why is not linear? Simply because in ambient here, you may have conduction, you may also have convection as well. You may have wind, or you may have natural convection. The hot air rise up, the cold air coming to replace hot air. That's called natural convection, okay? So that all cases would give you nonlinear temperature profile. The point is, for the calculation, if you repeat the process that we did before, you need to find temperature profile first before you can find heat flux, okay? But temperature profile like this is very hard to solve because, because of nonlinear nature and because of because it contains both conduction and convection. And the formula for convection is very complicated. So people think, can we use simple, simple formula or simple equation? The, the simplest one would be conduction. Can we make approximation that even though you have both conduction and convection in the system, can we think that it has only conduction? Okay, so we are going to make approximation from this scenario here to this picture. If you consider the position far from the wall, the temperature supposed to be almost constant. So around here, whether you move here or there, the temperature remains roughly the same. Okay, so we are going to take approximation that Outside a region, we will define a region, this region. And you say that outside this region, temperature does not change. But inside the region, there is a temperature change. Okay? The region outside here is called bulk. It's called bulk. Inside here, where you have temperature change is called film resistance. Okay? The thickness of this film resistance layer depends on condition of the air outside. Okay? But this approximation would be valid only under assumption that the heat flux in real scenario and heat flux in our approximation would be the same. So we will make approximation but keep the heat flux to be the same. All right? Within the film resistance, we will assume that the temperature profile within the resistance like this will be linear. 
So as long as you have temperature profile or linear temperature profile for one dimension heat transfer, that means within the region of film resistance, you consider the heat transfer to be conduction only, right? Or you take the conduction equation to describe behavior within the film resistance. So for conduction, normally if you integrate Fourier law in one dimension, flux would equal to K del T. If you integrate del T, you get delta T instead. Okay? So that means temperature difference for conduction. In this case, if you want to describe behavior inside the film, we will use the same equation. But now, it really depends also on the thickness of the film as well. So you need to divide this by the thickness of the film. All right? According to this equation, heat transfer is driven by temperature difference. So if temperature of the air outside is much cooler than temperature of the wall itself, the wall would, the heat would transfer a lot from the wall. Okay? So if I take the difference in temperature, this will be T1 minus T2. It also depends on how thick the film resistant layer is. If the film resistant layer is thin, that means the region here is very thin, heat would change abruptly, and then heat flux would go in great extent. Okay? So it is reversely proportional to the thickness of the film. So you just imagine that thin film acts like insulator layer that makes temperature drop. If you have thick insulator layer, then heat flux will be small. If you have thin layer of insulating layer, then the heat flux will be large. Oh, the heat flux will be small. If the layer is large, heat flux will be large if the layer is small. Okay? Now, but the actual phenomena is not really conduction. It is conduction plus convection. This is just our approximation. So the K here in the formula, which is which supposed to be thermal conductivity, cannot be described in this scenario because this is just a model. Besides, the thickness of the actual film resistance cannot be measured. We do not know how thick the film is. So we have to dump these two variables together and call this one the new variable H. H here stands for heat transfer coefficient. Okay? And heat transfer coefficient will be derived or will be determined using experiment only. So how can we measure heat transfer coefficient? We just measure temperature difference and measure how much energy is released. Then you can solve for heat transfer coefficient. So in the textbook, there will be empirical equation that give you, uh, give you information regarding heat transfer coefficient. Like if you have laminar flow and there will be energy released from stream or from the wall into the stream, heat transfer coefficient is supposed to be in what kind of formula? This formula is given in textbook already. Okay? Now, everything here is called Newton law of cooling. And Newton law of cooling is considered as macroscopic um, energy because we do not care what takes place inside. 
but it is very straightforward, very simple. So as long as you knew the law of cooling, you don't need to know temperature profile. Okay? This new law of cooling will be used extensively in unit operation three. So keep this in mind. Now, this is example. If you have a wall made by three different materials, so material one, two, and three. Suppose this one would be a wall of a furnace. You may have brick wall, a con concrete layer, and then insulator layer outside. It is called composite wall. Inside the wall, supposed to be high temperature. Suppose this one is inside the furnace. This one is outside ambient air. The air itself, you may have wind, so that there will be convection, and the temperature profile may no longer be linear. Inside the wall, you may also have convection. You have nonlinear temperature profile as well. So if we want to calculate heat flux regarding this system, what can we do? Okay? Suppose the wall is very large. That means the width W and the height is very large. We can consider this heat transfer problem to be one dimensional. That means energy is transported in this direction only. And let's call this direction x direction. Now, if I give a coordinate, this one is x0, x1, x2, x3. And somehow, if you have thermocouples or thermometer to measure temperature at the interface between two materials, suppose this is T0, T1, T2, and T3, respectively, the temperature of the air or atmosphere inside the furnace is Ta, outside is Tb. Okay? If you want to use shell balance, what does it look like? What does the shell look like? It should go perpendicular to the direction of heat flux. So as long as you assume that heat flux um, perpendicular to this wall is uniform, then the shell looks something like this. With the thickness of delta x. Okay? 